Let's face it, business technology is frustrating and complex. So how do you make sure it works for your team? To make IT right, start the discussion at go-domain.com. You're listening to Discussions by Domain, a podcast for business leaders. Our discussions may be with people you've probably heard of before, but the majority of our guests are in the trenches, professionals like you and I, with the same challenges and struggles of keeping up in the Northeast. They're implementing strategies, overcoming hurdles. They're leading the fastest growing businesses in our region. My name is Anthony DeGraw, Director of Partnerships at Domain Computer Services and the host of this show. When I'm not talking with business leaders, you'll hear stories from behind the scenes of Domain and the ups and downs of our own growth journey as we intend to take over the world. Just kidding. Well, maybe. Let's get into the show. Welcome to another episode of Discussions by Domain. Today I have John Teen, the Executive Consultant with Strategic Agency Partners. John, welcome to the show today. Uh, Thank you for having me. So, John, before we get into it, uh, I'm trying to settle the overall debate of is it pork roll or Taylor ham? It's Taylor ham. Ooh, interesting. Jersey boy, Taylor ham. That was the original name. And we up in North Jersey just stick with the original. (laughs) It's a big argument in my house, I can tell you that. My wife Uh, and I, she's from the Philly area. She's, it's pork roll. No, it's Taylor ham. I love it. I love it. True originalist. It's telling. Great. So, um, John, before we get into the topic today, why don't you give me a little bit of an overview and the the audience an overview of yourself and what you've been up to uh, over the last couple of years? Well, insurance geek. There's no way around it. Uh, Started 30 plus years ago at Allstate uh, on the claim side, went to underwriting, uh, landed up in public affairs, uh, ran the trade association for the insurance industry for quite a while. Then I went back to corporate at One Beacon where I was an executive and about, well, 2011, I joined A&E, worked to build that to become the 11th largest uh, agency network in the country. And now I'm uh, doing it again with strategic agency partners. I'm also doing some consulting and some advisory work with uh, insure tech firms. Awesome. So real quick, give us a background on uh, Strategic Agency Partners. What are you guys up to? Well, Strategic Agency Partners is an independent agency network. So we're an, in a group network of independent insurance agents that have come together. Uh, and as a result of doing that, we're able to help our agents earn more revenue. We provide consultative support so they become more efficient, effective, and really focus on new business growth, which is critical right now and very different in this environment. Uh, And so that's what we're doing. We've got uh, a number of agencies in South Jersey, Eastern PA, and we're going to continue to grow that out. We're looking for like-minded insurance agents who want to remain independent, but know they've got to be part of something larger, have that scale, have that influence in order to be able to survive and thrive. Awesome. So we're going to be talking today about the intersection between insurance agency operations and technology and kind of how technology has transformed insurance agencies uh, and the insurance industry in general over the last couple of years. So historically, uh, the agency operations have been more manual than they have been digital. Is this changing uh, and does it have to? Yeah, it has to change, and it is changing rapidly. The the reality is consumer expectations are changing. You know, we have these little gadgets we carry around with us all the time, these little things. Um, And people, particularly now, through COVID, have really adapted to utilizing that to manage their lives. So you can order your groceries, take care of your dry cleaning, you can manage your investments, you can do pretty much everything from your phone, yeah. but your insurance. <laughs> and so what's happening is both insurance companies are changing their systems and providing bigger platforms for agents and agents are changing their platforms in order to engage digitally with their clients. 
So, you know, clients today, consumers today, they want independence. They want control. They want to be able to do stuff that traditionally would require a phone call. They want to be able to add and change the driver. So the new platforms that are available to agents allow consumers to be interactive, be able to do that, have some control over what they're doing. So it is changing. And this, the COVID crisis, which folks, it ain't over and ain't going to be over for quite a while is forcing people to become more digitally savvy. You know, the, the, I, the soccer mom who, you know, running kids all over the place and trying to work, always wanted to use that app for Walmart so she could do what they do in the commercials and just pull up and her groceries are put in the back. Oh, that'd be great. But never really had the time to get around to loading the app and setting it up. Well, now they've had no choice. And I can tell you, consumers are not going to go back to old habits. They're going to rely on the new ones. So agencies are reevaluating their platforms, their interactions, their engagement. And really, it's, it's a tsunami change that, that's going on across the board. Yeah, and I want to bring up actually a live example that wasn't even planted this weekend, but it, but it has to direct uh, – relation to this conversation. So I'm at the pool, uh, my wife, two kids and uh, brother and sister are there, parents, everything. And my brother, who's seven years younger than me, so I'm 31. My brother's therefore 24. Um, and he rents an apartment and he goes, oh, by the way, and I just got this, uh, this email from this company uh, and they, they're offering pet insurance and it's like, it's super cheap. Like the last time I looked at it, it was like a hundred dollars when I got my dog and this company is like 19, 20 bucks a month. I was like, Oh, like who's the company? What's their name? He goes lemonade. And I knew from being in the insurance agency uh, marketplace, obviously probably five years ago now that they were up and coming and I hadn't really heard much. They were in New York play, blah, blah, blah. He goes, yeah, I have my renter's insurance through them and they just offered me a pet insurance. And I was like, and to hear it from, and that's the next, I thought about like, what's the next insurance mm -hmm. uh, consumer? And it's them, it's him. He's, you know, I got an apartment, I'm on my own. Yeah. I got a puppy, I, all of these things. He has a car, like what's next and where is he's going? And if lemonade is implanting in them, at 24, 23 years old and connecting with them as their first insurance experience, what do you think they want their insurance experience to be when they buy a house right. or a vacation home or whatever they're doing? So that just happened this weekend. And it yeah, was- and it, It's across the board. I mean, I, you know, I, it's not just young people. Yeah. God, 24, he's like a child. Um, <laughs> it's, he it's, is. It's across, you know, the story I tell is, you know, if you, I got to run into agents who, oh, young people, I don't really, those aren't my clients. Like, well, hold on. Here's my story. My wife and I last year were out getting dinner. It's March Madness. Villanova's in play. So everybody down here in the southern part of New Jersey, outside of Philly, is concerned about that. And so we're checking our phones. To our right is a table of three couples that we know. We go to the restaurant all the time. They're all in their 70s. They're doing the same thing. They're checking the phones to find out about the score of the game. But the interesting thing is, you know what they're discussing? Not the game. They're discussing the different apps that they use to get the score. Uh, so this isn't just young people. This is our world is changing. It's become much easier to use technology. And across the board, all ages, people are engaging in it and utilizing it because it makes their life more meaningful. So we just, anybody that's resistant to this, you got to get on the train. Yeah. Interacting with clients digitally is not a bad thing. The reality is no one wants to wait till 830 in the morning to call their agent to do something <laughs> they could take care of on their phone when they have the time. People work during the day and now you're working, you're taking care of your kids, you're doing homeschooling, you're doing a lot of other things. Your day's fuller. Their requirement to pick up a phone and give them another opportunity to digitally engage, that's a good thing.
Exactly. All right, let's let's switch it up to big data. So so with all this big change and the move to online and digital platforms, there's a ton of data coming in and there's a ton of billions of dollars in investment in what they call insure tech, right? How is that driving change and what is, I mean, we mentioned briefly Lemonade. That, that's a very, one example of a very small thing of what's going on. What else is going on in this world of this big investment, this data and the change? Well, it's all about data because if you have enough data, you can analyze it. If you can analyze it, you can predict and on and on. And Lemonade is a good example. It started back at the beginning of the insure tech boom where it was really about how we can get to customers, which was nice, except a lot of these people, once they got to a customer, they didn't know how to underwrite a policy. They didn't know how to manage a claim. They didn't know how to process things. So what we've seen is this huge shift in insure tech from getting to customers to processes, to improving the interactive processes between customer insurance company between customer and insurance agent. That's what shifted uh, in InsureTech and it uses data. So some of the biggest things right now are new platforms for agents that allow them to engage with prospects and engage with their current clients, but on one platform. We have Facebook ads and Google ads and Instagram and everything else that they might use all on one platform so that they can really control it and, to your point, gather the data of what is working, what is not working. They can hone their marketing and their engagement uh, techniques to really get it optimized. And for consumer, it's going to be great because systems that agents are using allow them to figure out this agent wants to be engaged by text, this one wants to be engaged by, wants to be engaged by phone. So it tells the people at the insurance agency how they have to go about it. And even I've seen technology where you can, okay, we've got to tell our customers about an impending uh, weather event. Okay, I can put together the notice, plug it in the system. It'll send a text to those that want a text. It'll send an email to those that want an email. And to those that want a phone call, it will send a recorded message. So we're getting there. Yeah, but it, it, it you're it's, literally, you're matching the customer where they want to be. You're communicating with them on the platform that they want to be communicated on. And that's critical because that's what customers' expectations are because everywhere else they go, that's what they get. So insurance agents, insurance companies have to match the consumer expectations that are already out there that are being driven by all the big uh, gorillas out there like like Apple and Amazon. Yeah, so speak on that a little bit deeper in terms of how is the relationship between an, my insurance agent and me as the consumer, how is that changing? How is it getting impacted? Well, it's evolving so that it used to be the only way you talked to an agent was on the phone. Yeah. Or you stopped in your office. Well, that's evolving. Again, the consumer is always in the driver's seat. So if the customer wants to be engaged digitally, I, just send me a text, send me an email. I don't have time for a phone call. That's how you have to do it. This concept of I won't do that because I'll lose the relationship, that's very old school. Customers have evolved, whether they're 24 or whether they're 74. They have evolved. They want it on their terms. And quite frankly, if I'm a parent, I'm married. I've got a couple of kids. My day is full. Yeah. The time I get up in the morning till the time I go to bed, my day is full. It's either taking care of the kids or they might have a parent they're helping out and I've got work and now I've got to deal with the kids who are learning virtually and I can't send the daycare because the daycare is only open three days a week. Yeah, but their days are full. The last thing they want is I have to remember to call the agent because that's the only way I can communicate. Yeah. They want to be able to send an email to somebody and get it done that way or go on. Increasingly, insurance agents have portals or apps where their, their clients can interact with them on the app and just do it digitally when they have the time, whether it's, it might be seven o'clock at night. Yeah. Send it out first thing in the morning, agent's office opens up, 
pops up on the customer service reps dashboard. They can handle it and they move on. Yeah, no, I, and I, I guess I'm a really good target of exactly what you were just talking about, right? Wife, two kids, both people work in the house trying to navigate schedules. And uh, I use, I personally, I have selective uh, here in New Jersey. I have selective for home, auto, umbrella, all of that. And I use their app. That's the app that I engage with. It's yeah. through my agent. I bought through an agent, a retail agent, and uh, they have the appointment with Selective. They got me Selective, and uh, but I engage with them all through that Selective app. Right, That's and Selective, sure. one of the leading companies that many years ago realized this was coming and have put enormous resources into those technologies. It's not a and or an or. It's really how do we enhance the customer experience? Yes, and give the customer what they need. You want, you wanted an agent who would give you advice and counsel on what to get the right coverages. But from that point forward, billing, claims, an ID card for the car, you don't need to engage the agent. <laughs> you have it on the app. So it enhances the relationship. And that's the key. Yeah. It's about taking that customer experience to the top level to make it the most enhanced for you, not anybody else. Yeah. How, how do, um, how do retail agents mark? How, how do you advise agents marketing and talking about that? Well, there, it comes to the realization that there's this misconception that young people want to do everything on the computer. Yeah. Not true. Latest surveys say, yes, they want to get information over the internet because they want to learn. They want to be better consumers. Yes. But when it comes to it, they would like to talk to somebody on the phone to get advice. Yes. How much insurance do I need? What is liability? Do I need an umbrella policy? And we find that true with particularly small commercial business folks. They want that advice. But then after that, once they've got the advice, they have a relationship with a trusted advisor. After that, they want digital interaction so that they can just move on with their day yeah. because everything after that is really just an interaction. So that's, um, that's the reality and agents are moving to do that. They're moving onto these platforms, just like you did with your, your agent at selective, you got the app. So you have the best of both worlds. you got an insurance company with great interactive tools for their clients. And you've got an agent, who has got access to a variety of insurance companies that give you right coverage and is working with companies that can give you that digital platform experience. Yeah. And it's actually even like, I mean, I don't know if this is amazing because I, I was in the industry, got out of it. I never did anything with personal, but this is, this is super interesting to me. I feel like at least as the consumer, my agent has even been able, and now she's a great agent, but she has been able to check in with me I'm not going to say as much as quarterly, but but probably every six months at least yeah. to just say like, hey, Anthony, how are the kids? What's going on in your world? Hi. I saw you added this vehicle, took this one off. You know, what what else should we be thinking about? And I feel like now where before that may have not happened because there was too much other things that needed right. to be processed by her. Now she has the time to do that. And that makes the experience and that relationship just go deeper and deeper where some of the nonsense or the, the, uh, the things as a consumer, we don't even see the value in because we just don't understand it. Um, th that has been better, which is well, interesting. What, what, what this new paradigm does is allows everybody to focus on what's important. Yeah. You can focus on your life. The agent, again, because we a lot of this is built around platforms that remind you haven't talked to Anthony in X number of weeks yeah. and then to check in. And it, again, the way it's done, it's done digitally, text, email, you can respond at your convenience as opposed to taking that phone call when you're trying to get the kid in the bath. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where these kinds of tools enhance the customer experience because it gives the customer more control but it yeah. doesn't diminish the interaction. Awesome. So for years and when I was in the, in the business, there was, you know, these experts that had been forecasting that insurance consumers like myself, 
you know, we're going to go direct to the insurance companies, completely bypassing the agents, um, especially as technology advanced. Has there been any sign of this? No, actually, it's, it's, it's interesting. There's always a segment of the population that wants to go direct. And that you've got your Geico's and your progressives on the personal line side to do that, evolving things like lemonade on, on the commercial side. And that's fine. There's always a percentage. But the vast majority of people, both on the personal line side and on the commercial line side, still want that trusted advisor, that person whose interest is yours and yours alone to talk about your particular situation, whether that's your home life, whether that's your business. What they do want is what's evolving now, which is better ability to interact, more efficiency, uh, digital, more digital experience, really a customer experience that puts the customer in control. Now, again, I, thought, I mentioned it earlier. There are numbers of studies that say people are learning more, going on the internet, getting information, mm -hmm. but they still want to talk to somebody. Yep. And if agents can make that ability to in interact easy, simple, and at the customer's determination, whether it's seven o'clock at night or eight o'clock in the morning or whatever, by text, by email, by video chat, whatever it is, then you're going to establish a relationship. The customer can get the advice that they need, the counseling they need, the education, the information, and then the rest of that process can be a digital one. Yeah. And that's the key. And so I, I've always said this, as long as an insurance agent who's knowledgeable and smart can develop a relationship with someone, they'll always have customers. Yeah. How that customer experience is, 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 is done is evolving and changing much different today than it was even a few years ago. And I think that the COVID crisis is accelerating that significantly because of the situation. Yeah. So with that being said, what does the future look like for insurance agents, consumers, and insurance companies? Well, for companies, it's going to be much more investment in technology, particularly in analytics. So they can really understand what they're underwriting. And a number of companies got really good at this. They really understand what they're underwriting. So they can really understand the exposure they can really put a good price on it and develop a really good product. For agents, it's going to mean, forget about brick and mortar. Again, back to the original purpose, which is relationships. So for an agent, the old fashioned, I had a, I had a little office on Main Street, not necessarily going to need that anymore because your customers are going to interact with you digitally. Yeah. They're not, and, and again, we, we don't know where this COVID thing is going, but my sense is, based on some data that we've seen, people are going to be more home focused, not necessarily going to go, I don't think all the population is going to re-engage once there's a vaccine. I think this is with us for years. So it's going to be about engaging with customers on their terms. Um, and I've seen a number of new platforms now that help agents create essentially a virtual agency. Um, you, their, their employees are going to be able to work from home. Yeah, uh, yeah. Big data and analytics are going to create artificial intelligence systems that take care of a lot of things. Yeah. So that you don't necessarily need lots of people. Uh, I think it's going to enhance the relationship between the agent and their client because it's really going to be one of advice, resource, consultation, on both personal side and on the commercial side. And that's what's important is the agent being able to sit down with the client and go, what's your situation? Let's talk about what the risks are, what the exposures are, what coverage do you really need uh, right now? Uh, for example, and you, you know this better than anybody, you're an expert, cyber insurance. Yeah. How many businesses in the last four months have had to build and implement a digital platform in order to stay in business. Most, mm -hmm. most have done this, whether it's retail, wholesale, whatever. Every company is doing it and they're collecting huge amounts of data now on clients. They need cyber insurance. Yeah. And that's created a whole new 
uh, land of opportunity, and it's just a, a, a sign that things are changing and continue to change. Exactly. Well, John, I really appreciate you coming on. Before, before we go, though, where can people learn more about uh, yourself? What's the best platform for them to connect with you on in this digital world? And, uh, and who are you looking to uh, join? I know you mentioned it briefly, but who are you looking to really join Strategic Agency Partners? They can simply go to our website, which is really easy. It's strategicagencypartners.com. <laughs> and from there, they can get a hold of us. Uh, and we're looking for insurance agents of any size who want to thrive, who want to grow, but don't want to have to sell. They want to continue to, to operate. And we've built a model that scales based on agent size and capabilities. But if the agent really wants to just be better and be part of something larger so that they have that influence and that scale to be able to thrive, then they need to talk to us. Awesome. Very good. Well, John, once again, thank you so much. Uh, John and I do have a presentation coming up. I think it's in about two weeks, sometime in early August, uh, where we will be talking to uh, insurance agency partners that are on the platform with him uh, about how to sell cyber insurance, what to look for, how to get in the door, open up opportunities, which in my uh, heyday resulted in, uh, you know, unseating, I don't know the right word, unseating the current agent, at least in one avenue, which therefore brings up other opportunities. And as most insurance agencies out there know, you never want to give up part control or let somebody else in the door. And uh, most companies, uh, business owners that I interacted with would give up the ability um, for the current agent to sit in that seat of that cyber seat, if you did have expertise and could talk about it, um, and wouldn't just naturally just give it back over to their current agent and broker, uh, which therefore gets you a look into the rest of the program. So we will be discussing that in detail. I'm going to try and bring as much value as I can for the people. And I think that's a great thing that John and his team are doing over there is bringing value in other ways, bringing outside professionals in the door to make sure that their agents are surviving and thriving. So good stuff. No, it is. It's great. I appreciate the partnership. No problem. All right, John. I'll see you. Have a good one. Take care, all. To ensure that you never miss an episode, subscribe to the show in iTunes or your favorite podcast player. This guarantees that every episode will get delivered directly to your device. To help us get the word out, share with a friend, leave a review, and check out our discussions on the web at go-domain.com slash podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.